All right. Hey guys, it's Bobby Legs and welcome to another episode of Bobby Legs Loves Watches. Today we're trying a little bit something different. We're doing a topic discussion called almost like a lightning round with my buddy here, Ryan. Um, and let me give you some of the, let me lay out some of the rules uh, of, of this little game that we're doing. It's going to be one minute for each topic and we're going to go back and forth and argue. And it's going to be a total of five topics, four watch related topics and one uh, wild card. Um, now I want to introduce you to my buddy, Ryan. We, Ryan and I go way back. He's a watch enthusiast, watch collector. Ryan, why don't you say a couple words uh, about yourself and then tell us what you're wearing. Sure. I've uh, basically been a watch nut since I was a little kid, starting out with a lot of digitals, Casios, and, and gaming watches, and always had my eye on something better. And at about the age of 30, I was able to acquire my first luxury watch at Breitling, and I've got a few pieces since, and something I'm very passionate about. And uh, I go back, you know Rob, since the 90s. We went to college together, fraternity brothers, and glad that we reconnected through Facebook uh, many years later through our love of watches. Awesome. And what's, uh, what's on your wrist, Ryan? This watch check for tonight, I have my IWC Big Pilot, which is the current favorite for right now, anyway. Nice, nice. And uh, I'm wearing my Casio G-Shock. Uh, you know, classic. this is, yeah, the classic. This is the second go at it that Ryan and I uh, are, are trying this out. So the first time I had my Black Bay 58, today was a little rough day with the kids. So I always wear the G-Shock for that. But... It's time to get started with the topic lightning round. And the first topic, Ryan, Rolex, overrated or not? Kick it off. Overrated. Uh, the market is just ridiculous right now. They're great watches, but uh, not for the price point. It, 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 I don't get it. Um, Rolex hasn't really changed their watches in, in decades. They're, they're all the same. No real orological innovation. And, and, and for me, I love, what, I love the one I have, but it's overrated. Well, you know, Brian, I got to disagree. You know, I think Rolex, you get exactly what you pay for. It is um, a watch that is tough as nails, always, always dependable. The finishings are great. Most of them are, or if not all of them right now, are, chron are chronometer certified. Um, and nobody brands themselves like Rolex. I tell you what, I mean, luxury brand wise, you may have like, you know, Gucci, you may have Cartier, you may have even even outside of um, fashion, you may have Apple or Nike, but nobody does it like like Rolex. Not in my opinion. On to the next topic: Patek or Elanga. Well, man, I got to go Patek here. You know, uh, you know, it's one of the holy trinity with Vacheron Constantine and uh, and Honor Begay. You got some beautiful classic watches. They've been around forever. Uh, precious metals. Nobody, nobody does precious metals, I think, in my opinion, um, like Patek Philippe. And you got the Grand Complications. You got the Nautilus. I mean, watches that are just in demand. Some of, the, some of them are in huge demand, uh, as much in demand as a Rolex. Just beautiful, beautiful classic watches. Rob, if it was up to me, I would change the Holy Trinity and put Longa in there because they belong <laughs> They rightfully belong there, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, they make the most beautiful dials. The symmetry is absolutely exquisite. The finishing, the movements in the, the, the case back, it, it's, it's true artwork. And I compare that to a Patek, and they're boring. I get it. They have great history. Uh, some of the great some of the watches, Grand Complication, great watches, but longer art, true artwork. All right, topic number three. Archie Luxury, take him or leave it. I like Archie Luxury. He grew on me. At first, I hated him. And then I realized he is reality TV. He's like the Kardashians of the watch world. <laughs> he's annoying and he's funny at the same time. I like to just watch him and laugh at him. And uh, I realized he has a place. There's a lot of guys out there have with their own channels. He's got, he has his own little take on it parcel about a niche I like him well you know Ryan the thing that gets me with archery Archie is that he's uh he's a little creepy you know what I mean like you know it's kind of like all right tone it down a little bit Arch but you know what he's also and maybe this is part of his his character 
But sometimes, man, I think he's really, really harsh. And he keeps a narrow mind. It's either Rolex or Patek, and maybe some other watches here and there. But if you don't have any of those, then your collection is, is crap compared to that. And you know what? I don't know, man. I, 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 could, I could leave him. Next topic, NATO or not to NATO? Me? Well, listen, I know what, you, what kind of guy you are. I'm a non-NATO guy. I like my bracelet. I like that. You know, I'm not wearing a stainless steel watch, but if I was wearing one right now, it'd be my Black Bay 58 stainless steel case, the stainless bracelet feeling. I just love to have, you know, a watch with some weight on it. Uh, I like, I like a, a, the stainless steel. I could wear it in the summer. I could wear it in the winter. I'm not going to get that stickiness, especially with, uh, if I was wearing a leather. I know this is about NATOs. But, you know, not for me, man. I like the little weight and girth on it. NATO, for me, was a game changer. I'm so glad I got back into watches. It's because of NATOs. They're so versatile. They're sporty. They weigh nothing. They're so comfortable on the wrist. They're rugged. Uh, they are the quintessential diving strap. I mean, the Rolex was made to have fixed spring bars and a NATO. What? You're a Rolex guy. <laughs> if you want a sub, you should have a mil sub. That would be the goal, a mil sub on a NATO. That's the only way to go for me. Uh, tough to argue that. Okay. Now, this is the, the wild card round here. Okay. Ryan, blondes or brunettes? Go. Brunettes. Brunettes, <laughs> hands down. Never been a blondes guy. Always brunettes, brown eyes. That's just the way it's been for me. Maybe it's part of uh, growing up in Brooklyn, being around maybe a lot of Italian women, Latino women. But uh, for me, um, brunettes. I, I don't know why, um, but I've always been attracted to the dark hair, dark skin. You know what, Ryan? I was kind of hoping you were going to say blonde. You know, because I'm also, I used to be a blonde guy, but now I'm a brunette guy. You know, my wife's a brunette. Alyssa Milano growing up, you know, I had a huge crush on her, and she was pretty much a brunette. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, where we grew up, you know, I grew up, you grew up in Brooklyn, I grew up in North Jersey. A lot of like Latino women, a lot of Italian women, you know what I mean? So it was kind of a part of the background, you know, and I, and I guess I can't really, really argue against that. So I think you may have won that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ryan, thanks for participating. You know, guys, we're going to try to do this on a weekly basis. Um, please put a comment down, you know, tell us who you think won tonight. Also, you know, it'd be nice to hear any comments on some ideas for future topics. And, uh, you know, Ryan, do you want to say a couple parting words? I'm just really thankful to have this opportunity. It's been a lot of fun. This is something I kind of wanted to do for a while. I'm, I'm just kind of guy who's been sitting back watching these channels for a while, watching your channel grow. And uh, it's just a lot of fun to get on and talk about something you're really passionate about. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. And we're definitely going to do this as, as many times as we can. Guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy. Take it easy.